I'm back. So, it's been about two hours. All right. Ooh, it smells amazing. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and give this a sprinkle. And the reason why I cut these bigger, so it takes longer to cook through, because you figure these are gonna be cooking for another four to six hours. So when you cut them too thin, it's they turn to mush or the carrots can turn black if you cook it for too long. So this is what this stew looks like. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you real quick how to make a roux, okay? So what you're gonna need, hello, over here, please. All right, so what you'll need is preferably a non-stick frying pan. I do have a bird, so I cannot use Teflon. It's absolutely toxic, it will kill them. So what I have is ceramic, and uh, you could use stainless steel, but I figure it's, well, in my opinion, it's a lot easier to cook with non-stick versus stainless steel. Everything likes to stick to stainless steel. So, uh, you know what? I could probably use a small pan. Yeah. All right. So, if I didn't learn this in gourmet cooking in high school, I probably wouldn't know this to tell you. So, for those who don't know, Typically, when you measure flour, you have to sift it. That is how you get an accurate measurement. For example, if you need a cup of flour, you don't just scoop it out and get a cup. That's why some, sometimes during baking, it can be very thick or it can be kind of gummy. So what you do is you sift it. A, it makes it a little lighter, and you'd be surprised how much flour you get out of one cup when you sift it. Okay, you get, I guess it's more for your buck. Where brown sugar, on the other hand, you pack it. So if you need a half a cup of brown sugar, you pack it in. Because if you just scoop it, it's not enough for your recipe. All right. So uh, I have softened butter here. So typically what you would do is about a quarter cup of flour to two tablespoons of butter about but in this case i'm not going to sift the flour what i'm just going to do is so the object of this is if you were to just throw flour directly into the gravy it's going to be clumpy and nasty what the butter does is it allows it to spread easily in the gravy thickens it without it getting clumpy so the butter is almost like a it kind of smooths it out it keeps the flour from clumping so you don't need too much butter my mom will make it like a little flour butter rock I make it almost like a cream okay so can't use metal on this so what I what I use in lieu of Teflon is I use ceramic and let me tell you I don't like Walmart I don't like Amazon and all them but in this case, if you can get Gotham Steel, it's the best set you could ever ask for, all right? So. You hear that? That's my neighbor. So loud, so loud, she's insufferable. And that's what you hear from early morning till late at night. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to do a, a loose measurement of a quarter cup, okay? I'm not going to sift it, so what I'll do is I'm just going to, there we go, so it's not a full quarter cup, but considering it's not sifted, you know, it's, it's approximate. You know, maybe I can... Give a little bit more back here. There we go. Yeah, so, all right. Eighth cup. All right, so we're gonna start this. You're gonna put it on medium heat, medium to low. All right, you're gonna throw the butter in first. Okay. 
And just as it's melting, you put the flour on, you mix it, because you don't want to cook it. All you're doing is creating almost like a like a, a flour paste, if you will. All right. So well, maybe I'll turn it up just a little bit more. Can't use metal on these pots, so uh, my rubber scrapers in the dishwasher currently. So here we go. Make do with what you have, right? Although food is a science, in this particular instance, it's not an exact science. It doesn't have to be. So here we go. You're just gonna, oh, here, just gonna turn that together. See how it's becoming like a, a paste. I'm gonna bring you closer. There we go. Ah. <laughs> okay. All right, so you're just gonna mix this up. See how it becomes like a uh, like a soft paste. Again, my mom she'll make it, and it'll be like a it'll be like a rock. But her gravy is not is none the clumpy. I like mine a little more loose. It's easier to spread inside the gravy or inside your stew. I do this for just about everything from my Swedish meatball gravy to my beef stroganoff. So yeah, see this consistency right here? That's what I personally look for. And it and in my per, in my <laughs> experience. You can kind of control the thickness. You can add this a little at a time, and you, you figure you're gonna see the, the optimal thic thickness that this is gonna come out to be within about 10 to 15 minutes. So you can add a little bit. I'm just gonna do the whole thing because I, I have a rough idea of how this is gonna turn out. All right, so that's perfect. You do not want this to start getting golden brown. You don't want it to start cooking. All you wanna do is melt and mix, and that's what you get, okay? Perfect. All right. So now I'm just going to add this in. And I also do a little bit of roux to make my au jus sauce when I make uh, my rib roast. I can show you guys how I do that as well one day. So I do like a herbed, a butter and herb rib roast. It's amazing. And one thing I forgot to tell you, if you want, you could put fresh rosemary in here. I do not have fresh rosemary. Again, this is a very forgiving dish. I did not put this over top of the meat. I put it in the gravy itself, and it should thicken a little bit. And you just kind of, yeah, look at all that herbs. Yum. See that? You got the onion, the garlic. There's nothing better than fresh garlic, but again, I don't have garlic cloves. Oh, it smells so good. Right? And I'll bring you guys back to show you how I shred it. And you do that after about six hours. Okay, so in the meantime, this is just going to sit and cook for a little bit. It's going to basket its own ambiance. And then I will clean some more. Let's see, where was I? I was talking about 9-11 and the, uh, you know, how everything kind of changed. And there, it seems like everything that the government does, you know, it's never for our interest. It's always for the worst. And what I didn't realize was it wasn't the incompetence. Granted, yeah, they're incompetent, but it's at a greater design. It Or it's done by design to slowly hurt us. I mean, look at Klaus Schwab. You'll own nothing and be happy. Well, let me tell you something. I don't own this place. I'm not happy that I don't own a property. So, uh, he's lying. I don't own anything yet. Keyword. So, they want us to be debt slaves. It's biblical. It's in the Bible. You own money, you will be a slave to the debtor. You know who knows that more than even Christians? You are the banks. A little food for thought. The banks know that very well. 
That's why they're offering loan after loan after loan. If you're making your payments, they'll give you some more debt to deal with. They don't think you're a, a, a star money manager. They just think you're a good debt manager, right? That's essentially what we are. We just, some people know how to manage debt better than others. I like to think of myself as a pretty good debt manager, but I'd like to be 100% debt free, which I'm gonna say I'm about 90% debt free. Not easy, but worth it in the end. Because when you don't owe, any, owe anybody anything, and you can pay for everything you want in cash, A, 90% of the time, you don't have to pay full price for the thing that you're paying cash for. And B, I lost my B. B, you develop the mentality of, well, if I can't buy it outright, I'm not getting it. And I know cars is a hard one. That's, that's one of the things that I'm financing because I can't. I can't buy a $30,000 car out right now. Some people say, well, why don't you buy a $5,000 car? I would love to have that luxury. However, I drive great distances every day, not to make excuses for myself, but I need something dependable with a warranty. My next car, I will buy cash. Because this one I'm going to pay off and drive until it drives no longer. So. Oh yeah. This tough and tender also cleans your sink. Uh, let me show you. I hear it just fell out of its, isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Now I'm just gonna dry it because I don't like a wet sink. Last thing I need is centipedes, you know? We don't want that. I'm scared of them. No water. They like water. So I'm just gonna dry this out. And some people think I'm very OCD, and part of it's true. However, you do a good job the first time. You don't have to worry about cleaning it again and again and again. And of course, I have pour. I just pour it right down. There we go. And yes, I wash my dishes before I put them in the dishwasher. Not necessarily with soap, but you don't want crud because then you'll end up with debris on your dishes after they're cleaned. So, all right, so we made a roux. In about 15 minutes, you'll notice that it gets a little thicker. Now, technically, you're not supposed to really put that in until I would say about an hour before it's done. But for the sake of showing you guys how, how to make a roux, for those who don't know, uh, that's how it's done. And it shouldn't be a problem. I guess I'll find out. I've never done it this early before. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys, I hope what I'm doing for you is helping. For those who've never made a pot roast before, or not sure how to do it, or what the proportions are, the et cetera, et cetera. So, so that's this dish. Uh, yeah. yeah, a little flour. So let's see, what else? There was something that I noticed in the previous video that I started explaining and then I forgot. I'm really bad at that. I'm, I'll be on track and then, so. I have a lot to work on when it comes to video recording, but I'm not trying to be a podcaster, but I do love cooking. I teach people at my church how to cook. I enjoy it a lot, and a lot of people I've helped. Ooh, I tried a little bit. It's really good. You know, I helped a lot of people along the way, and there's a lot of people out there now who don't know anything about cooking. Like, everything is takeout, and... If you want to save money, this is the way to do it. For the price of going to Longhorns, you can buy yourself a filet and do it right at home at a fraction of the price. So, with that said, let me get this out of the way. I don't want it to get too warm. Yeah. 
Let's see, what else could I touch on while I'm hanging out here for a little bit? And I said to myself, if I could sit through my own video and watch it without figuring that I either need to delete it or have to edit it, if I could sit through it, I'll post it. And the first one, surprisingly, I was able to sit through, despite me hating my own voice and being like, come on, stop stammering, because I could stammer too. But when I'm cooking, I just speak my mind, and it's pretty easy. And because I'm looking at myself, talking at myself, I'm starting to be, like, nervous. <laughs> I got those judgmental eyes. Uh, let's see, what else? What else can we talk about? You probably turn that off. Hmm. Let's see. So I, I did mention that I, I can't hate the guy who's playing Biden. It's funny because I don't know if any of you guys know Il Donato Trumpo. That's Donald Trump's alter ego that he uses on Twitter. I follow him and he responded to one of my posts once. I, oh man, that, that, that lit up my world. Even though it might not be him, it could be one of his cabinet members, still getting like a, a like or a, you know, you wanna hear the story? Okay. So if you remember back in 2021, Trump, you heard on the news that they were shutting down Trump's bank account, you know, shutting this down, shutting that down, shutting down this, you know, and then there's rumors that maybe he doesn't have enough access to it or they're not giving him enough time. Same thing with Mike Lindell. So I saw Il Donato Trumpo, but there was another guy called Baron Trump or something like that, or the Baron, and it's got Trump with the same mustache. And this guy who was posing as Trump was asking for money, saying, you know, help me out, da 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 da, da. I wanna see who my real friends are, because if you read his book, I'd like to lose everything to find out who my real friends are. So me, like an idiot, not looking into anything, I only gave 10 bucks, don't yell at me, but still, I could have given it to a better cause, or I could have given it to someone who actually needed it, not this scammer who was posing as someone else and taking advantage of Trump's misfortune, right? So I figured it out right away. As soon as I sent the 10 bucks, I was like, you know, like when you feel like something's not right as you're doing it, it's like, you know what? It's probably because I'm paying $10 to something I'm not 100%, right? And it's $10 that I need, right? It's gas money, or, you know, you don't know where the economy's going, etc. So as soon as I hit send, when I looked at the, the handle of where that money went, I was like, that's not Trump. I was like, oh my God, this guy's taking advantage of people. So I saw Il Donato Trumpo say, if somebody else is posing as me here on Twitter, report them. It's not me. So I messaged Il Donato Trumpo and I said, hey, the person who's posing as you is not only acting like he's you, but he's also asking people for money. And I've seen some of his posts where he was saying, uh, where are you guys going to be on election day? This, that, and the third. Kind of like, like a Fed would kind of like see if he can goad people into doing something stupid, right? So Trump says, report him, like he's telling me, report him right away. That's not me. And, uh, you know, you know, don't listen to what he's saying. I would never say something like that. No problem. Okay. But he didn't say all those words, but basically like a good one or two sentences. You know, I got the message, right? So I said, okay. So I took care of it. I reported him. And somehow his account got deleted. So maybe, maybe myself and a few other people, you know, reported the same guy. I don't know. So I let him know. I said, hey, I reported him. He's gone now. You know, hopefully he doesn't try to find another thing. He goes, good job. You know what it's like to have our favorite president tell you good job? I was like, oh, I had to show my mom. I was so excited. I screen capped it and sent it to my mom. <laughs> and there was another thing where he did a post and I, I think it was just like a laughing emoji and he hit like, it's simple things like that. And I'm like, oh my God, because you know, he's not my idol, but 
in a lot of ways I look up to him and he's he's just amazing like he's great with business he's great with people he's the people's president he's the only president in history that had our best interest in mind and you cannot take that from him love him or hate him you can't take that from him okay so that's my story on that so <clears throat> I just just felt that connection and it, it never it never severed so I'm going to tell you a little story about how I became awake awake okay now you have conservatives who are sleeping you have liberals who are sleeping okay a lot of this country is still sleeping what i mean by sleeping is you're seeing things at the surface but you're not seeing the forty thousand foot view right so when when i when my wake up and when you wake up it's like boom like it's like lightning right so I thought I was awake because everyone else around me in the state of New Jersey is like super normie. So I thought New Jersey is not as liberal as you may think. So I woke up pretty much after Biden got inaugurated, like awake, awake, but I was awakening before that. So I, I was, it was after, it was before January 6th. I noticed that something was off, like, okay, well, the election was stolen, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, well, if it's an Ill illegitimate election, then, you know, this has to happen. That ha and it seems like every time they did something, they were striking out. Like, the Supreme Court wasn't seeing it, the legislators weren't seeing it, or, you know. But then you have Mike Lindell jumping in there and doing the 2,000 meals. Oh, no, that's um, Dinesh D'Souza doing 2,000 meals. But I think Mike Lindell has a lot to do with the... the um, the investigation. Anyways, so I probably shouldn't say it so freely, consider it's this video will also be on YouTube. So, so when I woke up, and this might be your story, almost identical. I mean, I know so many people who have woken up and it was similar to mine. And I always thought of myself as a smart person who could see the forest through the trees, you know. Not this time. I've been had. I'll give you a prime example. I fell for COVID. I fell for it. I was the one who had the Buffant cap on, two masks, uh, a surgical drape over me because I had access to it. And I, you know, instead of throwing it away after, you know, if we open something and they cancel the case, I saved it. So when I go to the grocery store, I have a, a surgical gown on to keep the germs off. I was that person because, you know, I have a, Hello? My battery. Okay. I have a nephew who has a, you know, his immune system isn't the best. My mom has a, com a compromised immune system. My sister, you know, she works in healthcare. I don't want her to get sick. So I wanted to be as safe as possible. And I think everybody had that in mind. And you have the news saying, you know, save granny. And I know hearing it from the news as, as it was, despite how careful I was, I didn't believe a lot of what they were saying. Again, I thought it was off. I'm like, why do they keep promoting? And, and then, you know, I have other people who are awake saying, you know, they're going to push a vaccine. I'm like, it's going to take a long time to get a vaccine. But then I'm like, you know, I know once they do, because they keep hyping this, this pandemic up, that they're going to push it. I was like, well, I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, they're overstepping every other boundary. Why not that? So... My turning point, I know it's like, get to the point already. Okay, so my turning point was I was in my room. I'm like, there's got to be something. There's got to be something. So I didn't discover Patriot Street Fighter. If, for those who know him, he started off as Patriot Street Fighter, and Patriot Street Fighter 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I think he's like Patriot Street Fighter 40 now. I discovered him probably March of 2021, and I fell in love with him. Just, I mean, he's, you know, the truth hammer, you know what I mean? That, that it is what it is. It's exactly as he says it. It's just boom, boom, boom. He's going after people that you didn't even think of. Like, oh, this guy who's running for, uh, this guy who's running for sheriff, you know, he's corrupt or he's good. You know, he's, he's finding people that are coming out of the woodwork 
and he's scrutinizing them or he's doing extensive research on the backgrounds of all these people. So he's a very well-rounded individual. You know, he also talks about, you know, health and wellness, ascension, things like that. And just like everybody else, we're all like a fingerprint. You know, we you're not going to agree with everything I believe. I don't agree with every single thing that Scott believes. But that's what makes us human. And I respect him for his belief because he backs his belief up by his own conviction. You can't say anything against that, whether or not you think it's true. As far as religion goes, let's say, right? So, just like you have, I, I have a lot of Democrat friends, and you have some that are buku bananas, and you have some that favor certain, for example, that they might like Joe Manchin, but they're more of like a conservative Democrat. And sometimes, and some Democrats that I know scrutinize their own people very well, and I have a lot of respect for them. So, long story short, we're all in this together, so... I see this guy, Brad Barton, on Facebook Live, and I stumbled on him. I don't know how. It's almost like God answered me. Because I was like, God, there's got to be something. There's got to be something. There's got to be something more to the than what the mainstream media has to offer. And even, I didn't even know the alternate media. The only thing I had was Alex Jones. But he was talking about our doors getting kicked in and we're going to get killed, you know, in the middle of the night. So I'm sitting there like, got to double lock my door. So he was... I mean, I think some of his research is pretty good, but you know, he was he was uh, he was rough for somebody who was just waking up, right? So, so I, I got away from Alex Jones because then he was saying things that just, in my mind, just wasn't true. You know, or I don't want to say it wasn't true, but it was just a little went a little too far. Uh, so then I discovered this guy Brad Barton from. Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he was saying, oh, something's big, gonna, he's one of those, something big's gonna happen, something big's gonna happen. But nonetheless, he served a good purpose for people like me at that time who just needed to hear from somebody who sounds or thinks like I do, and that, that, that sounds kind of shallow. What I mean is that sees things for what they are. The only thing was he's a little bit of a sensationalist, you know, and he, he kept saying that he has a source that's related to a Q member and things like that. And that, again, like I said, Q explicitly says that here you have your information. It's only 20% of what's the big picture. And they did that for a very good reason. And Trump said it himself. Never again will we divulge military information or our next move or when we're going to attack any kind of war tactic. So this is a military sting operation. So anybody who claims that they have the source or has the answers, I would watch out for them, okay? Now, there are people out there who are good at connecting dots. You know, people who could put things together, be like, okay, well, I'm seeing this, 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 and this. It looks like, you know, by this point, if it hasn't happened already that we notice, it probably could be now or, you know, again, the times, they alter the times a little bit. I mean, how many times does Trump have a a speech where he's 15 minutes late or even an hour late, depending? It's So it's not in our time, it's military's time. And they do that for mainly safety purposes, right? So, so I come across Brad Barton. Now, despite him saying something big is going to happen, I, now I thought Inauguration Day, there was going to be mass arrests because of what Brad said. Now, a lot of people said it because the way everything was looking at the time, we all believed it and found it easy to believe. However, you know, there are users out there that kept doing it. Okay, well, it's gonna be March 4th because that's the original inauguration or it's gonna be, it's gonna be August, if you remember, it's gonna be August 28th, Trump will be reinstated. Truth be told, okay, why Trump would still be president and why he wouldn't be. Okay, so I'll start by why he's not president is because he has to separate himself from what the government's doing during this sting operation. He's going to have nothing to do with when the military does come in 
and say, okay, this needs to be straightened out. This is a mess. Trump's going to have nothing to do with it because he's not president. He's a president in exile. Okay. Why he would be president? Well, during the inauguration of Joe Biden, Trump was in the back of, uh, uh, oh goodness, what is it? St. Andrews? Why can't I think of it? They did the hail to the chief and on the fourth ruffle, they, they did do the shooting. And if you listen closely in the, on the inauguration day, they tried to blank it up, but you could hear it. Biden's was honors March 1 and they did a misfire. So that means re minister resident. Now, here's the thing. January 15th of 2021, there was a three-star general. I can't remember his name. It was two or three-star general on Good Morning America with, uh, I, I want to say it's George Stephanopoulos. And he says, yes, it's a, it's a very good day and it's a great peaceful transfer of military power. And George Stephanopoulos was like, oh, okay, wait, what? And then he was like, wait, what? And then the general just continued talking, you know, about Martin Luther King Day, things like that. So that was almost like a message to the masses. Hey, this is, you're under military power now. So you have that. So why do, are we watching this charade go on in, in Washington? Well, you have to see what was written on paper during the Obama administration and what Hillary was going to do be said out loud and be controlled, acted out, if that makes any sense. For example, they want to raise gas prices. They want to shut down the Keystone Pipeline. They want to do this. Okay, so here's my theory on that. So with this administration in there and there are still corrupt players in our government maybe not all of them, but there's a lot that are still there right they're going to shut down the keystone pipeline and that was okayed because you're not going to produce any more fuel to fuel a war now it's you okay you want to do this thing with ukraine this that and the third well you got the reserves and that's it it's the only thing I could think of why they shut down the Keystone Pipeline. I'm sure that there's something bigger behind the scenes, but on the surface, I'm like, oh my God, Biden's first day in office, he's shutting down the pipeline, you know, getting rid of over 50,000 jobs, right? Good paying jobs. So you have that. <clears throat> now, the other thing is, I've never heard more times them saying, especially Trump Jr., he's always, uh, or Donald Jr., this guy just said the quiet part out loud. This one said the quiet part out loud. You didn't hear that, ever. Now it's, you're hearing it all the time. Why? Well, my theory is because back then, the, uh, the government, the Democrats in particular, not to say that there's rhino, there's, trust me, there's a lot of rhinos who do it too, that do things on paper and then they make a charade that they're fighting over it. You know, one's in our favor, one's in the government's favor under the guise of helping the people through a back way. Now they're straight up saying, for example, DC is a no fly zone, strictly no fly zone. You have Jen Psaki going, oh look, there's a plane. You can hear the plane flying overhead. You know, so D.C. is not how we perceive it to be because any other time outside of the time that we're in right now, there would be no planes flying over the White House unless they're not in D.C. altogether, that they're actually at Black Rock in front of the White House or whatever press holding that they have where they heard the plane flying overhead. So there you have that. It's amazing what you learn in a couple of years when you, you know, go headstrong into something when you want to try to find your research. So, you have that. Why Trump would be president. He would be maybe not necessarily president of the government, 
because don't you think at this point one of them would slip? Now, granted, you have the news that says President Trump. You have other news stations that say former President Trump, but a lot of them still say president. Why he would be? Well, technically he was elected fair and square by the people. So you have that, and then he's running he's running the country behind the scenes and he has a chokehold on the people that are trying to oust him excuse me so they can't say anything because he's like okay well i'm still your president and you're going to do things very differently now you'll be able to pass different mandates and things like that but it's going to have no holding on people until they wake up of course you say anything to screw that up it's not back blackmail, but maybe because of how corrupt they are, he's going to be like, you're going to be called out for what you're doing. Maybe in the act that they're, they're doing it, right? So there, there's definitely a lot of deals being made, a lot of things being acted out, things like that. There's things that I don't understand, and I leave it to the Anons who could connect dots very, very well. Uh, but based on the information that I've taken in from different people and different documents that I've read, if you, all you have to do is read his executive orders, right? Every single one of them was to restore our freedom and founding. Every single one of them. I suggest you read at least, let's see. Yeah, one's against trafficking. I think the first one had to do with um, election integrity. So definitely do your research. Don't take it from me. Again, I told you these are my theories. It's not my it's not my ultimate truth because I'm still learning. And I will talk to you in a little bit to shred this delectable goodness. And uh, we could talk a little more. Hopefully, in the least, you find what I'm saying is interesting. You know, and uh, just want to say that you're not alone. If you feel like you're alone in this world, I'm, I'm from New Jersey. There's people like me here in the state of New Jersey. Trust me, they're everywhere. So you are not alone. Uh, the best thing you can do is get connected. I did the Operation Tomahawk in... At the end of July, I didn't do anything with it because my sister was getting married in August. So I jumped into it in September. You know, I had the products and stuff, but then I fell in love with everything and started promoting it. And I can't tell you how many people I've connected with. And I'm a very bad salesperson as, if, as far as, you know, getting people connected to, you know, purchasing safer products. Because I'll sit there and talk. Like I'm talking to you guys right now, talking about, well, you know, Trump this, you know, we're doing this. And I think this is going to happen. We, we spend so much time doing that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Um, so <laughs> this is what this costs. That's what this costs. And, you know, the quality of this side is here. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's amazing when you get in the fight in your own way, you know, whether it's school board meetings. Like if, you, if that's what you want to do, you want to be a mama or papa bear, you'll probably find your own group. You know, from school board meeting, you're gonna sit by someone, just exchange conversation. Next thing you know, you have a friend, or you find someone at the truth tour. You know, um, that happens uh, every year, or every so many months. You know, you have Scott McKay, Clay Clark. If you don't know who he is, he's pretty good. He's very good at doing research with the World Economic Forum. Uh, Yuval Noah Harari, that that dog. Well, you listen to what that guy says. He's absolutely insane. Klaus Schwab, Soros, you know, all of these slobs that's trying to run this entire country like a bunch of, or run this entire world like the Nazis that they are. Uh, so you have people like them, and then you have uh, Eric Jr., I think, talks, uh, Eric Trump talks at these uh, truth tours as well, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's what shows, in, in my opinion, that the speakers that are in that 
move in that tour, you know, you have Eric Trump, it's almost like he and, and Michael Flynn, General Michael Flynn, it's almost like it confirms a little bit of what they're saying or they, they seem to be on the right path. So I've, uh, you know, I've learned a lot from different dot connectors, I'll call them, or different nuns, you know, and they're very good at decoding what these series of questions are. And that's all Q is, it's just questions to inspire you to do your research. They're not gonna sit there and throw conspiracy theories at you. It's, so, you know, who died on the Titanic? Who really died on the Titanic? Was it the Titanic? Well, there's actually a documentary regarding, just good example, there's, you had the Titanic, but because it was considered an unsinkable ship and how expensive it was, it wasn't covered by insurance. So they put another, the sister of the Titanic, and they just called it that, crashed it so that they got a huge payout through insurance. Now, when you look at the movie, they say the opposite is true. Well, I'm not gonna take it at face value. Let's do some research. Well, there was a person who was against the central bank that was coming to the United States. He died. So there's a lot of, it, it just goes to show you the kind of power that some of these big wigs have. Even, even somebody who, they're taking out presidents. I mean, look at, they shot Ronald Reagan, they took out Kennedy, they took out Abraham Lincoln. You know, so these, these are the kind of players that we're up against and that is why those who claim that they have a source and they have all the information, most likely they're bullshitting you because they're trying to get the followers, they're trying to get the views. Now, I'll watch some of them for entertainment purposes and that is exactly what a TV is. And that is another reason why the news is not necessarily obligated to deliver hard, cold truth because what you're watching is an entertainment box. However, newspapers are not necessarily for entertainment. Newspapers are the news, but you have the Washington Compost, you have the New York Times, that are propagating information in black and white. And if you don't believe me, how many times do the, they say by the end of the week or within two weeks, oh, we made a mistake, right? So I'll talk to you later. I'll show you how to shred this meat and uh, hopefully you're enjoying this.